before our courts. And there has developed an area of practice where there are people who are now experts in alternative dispute resolution. And if you see the provision in subsection 7 of the bill, Senator Kajuang has proposed that because this is going to be a dispute resolution mechanism, a mediation committee set up to mediate uh, a matter of uh, a dispute between counties on a matter regarding boundaries, then the person to chair it should be a person with 15 years experience in alternative dispute resolution. I don't think that is a misplaced suggestion. In fact, that committee would benefit immensely by having somebody, not just a lawyer, and not just any lawyer, not even a lawyer who just has two or three years experience in mediation. No, because of the complex issues that my colleagues have raised here, the bill has provided for somebody with 15 years experience in alternative dispute resolution. And Mr. Madam Speaker, on a light note, I have challenged my colleagues here from other professions. If indeed we can find a doctor, a veterinary doctor or a doctor of Halwale's uh, caliber, who can be able to do a better job at a mediation meeting than a person with 15 years in alternative dispute resolution? By all means, I don't think the lawyers in this house would object. But what we are saying is nobody should uh, paint the picture that lawyers are somehow imposing themselves in places where they are not needed. In fact, this is one of the areas where a person with that experience would benefit most immensely uh, the, 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 the job that he has been asked to do. Secondly, Madam Speaker, I have had notions here expressed about whether Nairobi needs to continue as a county. Others have suggested outright that Nairobi needs to be managed differently, that Nairobi should no longer be a county. Madam Speaker, for me, you have to go back to the process of the review of the Constitution. And I was not there, yes. I was still in uh, uh, high school. No, not high school. I was still in the university when uh, some of my colleagues were doing BOMAS and Naivasha. But I have had the privilege of reading the final report of the CKRC. And if you read that final report, you will understand the thinking that went into every specific uh, uh, provision of the Constitution and the architecture that we ended up with. The concept or the idea behind devolution, Madam Speaker, does not change based on where the person is or where they live or the circumstances in which they live. The concept of devolution is to get services and resources to the lowest possible unit of administration. Now, lowest units of administration exist just as much in Nairobi as they exist in Hoba Bay, where the sponsor of this bill comes from. Madam Speaker, the people of Mukuru Kwanjenga would want direct access to resources and services just the way somebody in Kanyamwa would insist on direct access to resources and to services. They also want to see government. If you read the CKRC report, Madam Speaker, you will remember Kenyans say that government is a far-off notion for them. And if you talk to our brothers and sisters from the northern frontier districts, they will tell you that even people moving from Mandera, from Garissa, coming to Nairobi, used to say that now we are going to Kenya. It is because of devolution that places like uh, Turkana, places like Mandera, Wajia, were seeing the first kilometers of tarmac in their counties, uh, Honorable Madam Speaker, so that nobody can argue that a Kenyan living in Nairobi does not deserve devolution. Madam Speaker, in fact, if you... Uh, recall the, the, the reasons that have been advanced by my colleagues, especially the mover of this motion, Senator Kajuang, on why he thinks that Nairobi needs to be managed differently. Madam Speaker, in fact, that matter has already been thought about. There exists on our books a law called the Urban, cities, uh, Urban Areas and Cities Act. And Madam Speaker, that act is CAP 275 of the laws of Kenya. It is still on our books. I want to refer you to the objects of this particular bill, and they are found at section three of the bill, of the act. They are to provide, the act is to provide for governance and management of urban centers, urban areas and cities. And if you look at a uh, clause 4A of that act, which was introduced via an amendment in 2019, it actually provides uh, Honorable Kajuang for a mechanism for delineation of boundaries of urban areas and cities. If you go further, 
Madam Speaker, to Section 6 of that Act. It provides for management that there has to be a way to deal with management and infrastructure in the capital city and that they shall be managed in the same manner as county governments. Then, Madam Speaker, subsection 3 of that section 6 talks about the capital city required to provide infrastructure necessary to sustain, number one, the seat of national government, number two, offices of the diplomatic missions, and number three, commerce and industry. So that, Senator Kajuang, all these factors, the uniqueness of Nairobi, is something that has already been anticipated and thought about. And there exists a law to provide a mechanism for collaboration between the national government and the county government of Nairobi for us to be able to ma uh, manage the unique issues that exist in Nairobi that don't exist in Homa Bay town. I am sure there is no diplomatic posting in Homa Bay. So, Madam Speaker, the problem has been that if you look at subsection 6, sub, uh, subsection, six subsection 5, of the Urban Areas and Cities Act, there is a requirement for national government and the county government to enter into an agreement regarding the performance of the functions and delivery of services by the capital city. And this is where we are stuck. Because the national government has repeatedly failed to come through on its responsibilities to ensure that Nairobi City County, as the capital city, the seat of government, and the host of uh, diplomatic missions, is able to undertake these particular functions. And it is compounded, Madam Speaker, by the fact that national government institutions, including parliament, have refused to pay rates to the county government of Nairobi. As we speak today, national government institutions owe Nairobi City County over 100 billion Kenya shillings in unpaid rates. All these institutions that we host here, it would be very easy for us to be able to provide these services, Madam Speaker, to make sure that you enjoy the sort of infrastructure you want to enjoy in the city county, if the national government did its bit. Do you know, Madam Speaker, that Nairobi City County has an outstanding pending bill of electricity owed to Kenya Power and Lighting Company, equivalent to the equitable share of Lam County, two billion shillings, as we speak today. And it is because, again, Senator Halwale, comes from Kakamega, when he tells his people he's going to Nairobi, there's a certain expectation of the sort of life he's going to lead in Nairobi. He's not going to drive on dark roads as if he's driving to Musanda. No. He wants to drive from his home in Karen to, <laughs> to here in the Senate while the road he's driving on is properly lit. So these unique needs of the county of Nairobi should not make people start telling us that somehow the people of Nairobi do not deserve devolution. I was sitting somewhere at a hotel here in Nairobi in February of 2020 and a breaking news item came on the news, Madam Speaker, that the then Governor Sonko was actually at State House signing a deed of transfer of uh, functions of the county government to the national government. I was in shock. I couldn't believe it. In fact, Madam Speaker, it is the one time that I've been caught flat-footed about the possibility of such things happening and a sanction of our constitution. I didn't know that it could be done. I was in shock. Madam Speaker, two months later, Governor Sonko was saying he signed that thing under duress. In April of 2020, he told us that he was signing it under duress. And it was a dark time for those of us who believe in devolution because the question is still out there. Those of uh, us who are of the opinion that Nairobi needs to be managed differently, Madam Speaker, has the NMS done any better? As we speak today, over 20 billion shillings outstanding still as spending bills. They hired people the same way that the county government does. Madam Speaker, there were very serious questions as to whether the NMS was following procurement proce uh, procedures in some of the works that you saw being done at lightning speed because they were not as hamstrung by the same rules of procurement that the county government was uh, hamstrung. We have a problem uh, with leadership in Nairobi. And as I have uh, explained to you, even in 2020, part of the problem was the then leadership. Madam Speaker, I think I've dwelt enough on this particular subject so that allow me to deal with the substance of this bill. But I beg my colleagues not to look at Nairobi as a problem, as a county that needs to be managed by a manager. No, 
the people of Nairobi have suffrage. They deserve services being devolved to the lowest possible level. They deserve to see members of county assembly, people they can ask about the road passing outside their house. They deserve to be able to ask the governor why the garbage at Umoja Inako has not been collected since September. Who will they ask, uh, Honorable Halwale? when you tell us that there is this manager who is going to come. And the experience of the NMS was that the manager for Nairobi City County was holed up at State House, an institution you know some of us in the opposition cannot be allowed to visit. So, Mr. Madam Speaker, for me, I want to be able to see the governor, the person responsible for my resources. I want to be able to see the MCA and so on and so forth. And I want this House to know that those problems of employment, of employment and spending the bulk of the money on uh, personal emoluments and salaries are also present in Nairobi. If you speak to the finance officer in Nairobi, she will tell you that the exchequer amount that comes to Nairobi every month is equivalent to the salary that goes out. So very little in terms of revenue uh, excesses for development is left. But Nairobi has potential to collect so much in terms of uh, on-source revenue. And my, Mr. Madam Speaker, the problem is that we have not been able to see loopholes. As we speak right now in the County Assembly of Nairobi, there's a very serious inquiry into the revenue streams, whether we are collecting, whether we are managing our own uh, revenue management system. When my governor appeared before the committee that is led very ably by the Senator of Homa Bay, he told us that the servers running the, uh, the, the revenue collecting system were at uh, City Hall, that he can see them. Ma Madam Speaker, Senator Kajuang will be shocked to learn today that, in fact, those servers, nobody knows where they are. <laughs> nobody knows where they are. The MCAs have tried to ask questions. The governor is dodgy, and nobody can show you. If we go to City Hall, which is just uh, walking distance from here, you will not see those servers. So, Madam Speaker, allow me to say that the object of the bill sponsored by Senator Kajuang has nothing to do with the arguments of the viability of counties. In fact, that is a discussion that was had a long time ago. I remember the final BOMAS draft, Madam Speaker, had proposed 14 counties. How that was decimated, and we ended up in, with units that everybody says are not viable, is a matter for history and a matter that can be corrected through proposals such as the ones that Senator Halwale is making. But Madam Speaker, I am happy because Senator Kajuang has thought about a matter that precedes the kicking in of Article 188. Because Article 188 only talks about alteration of the boundaries. But what Senator Kajuang is thinking of is before we get to the stage of alteration of boundaries, can we sit down and have a conversation about what the dispute is? I would be very happy, Madam Speaker, if this bill was put in place as soon as yesterday. Because as you know, there is a fight going on between the counties of Nyamira and Kisi as we speak over Keroka town. And it is all about the pressure that has come from uh, uh, everyone about counties trying to raise their own source revenues. They see Keroka Town as a market, as a source for that own source revenue that every county is working to achieve. Well, I'm speaker, therefore, I want to say that the bill is very well thought out. It has provided a mechanism for us to be able to appoint uh, a mediation committee that is chaired by somebody with expertise in alternative dispute resolution. And... It has even said, if you are an advocate who is guilty of professional misconduct, you cannot be uh, eligible for appointment for these particular committees. Madam Speaker, when you talk about alteration of boundaries, I have sat in that committee uh, led by Senator Kajuang, and I have come to learn that people are very passionate about their counties. In fact, Senator Halwale, if we were doing this meeting in Mashinani, Senate Mashinani, you would not have left that county <laughs> where we were doing that Senator Bashidani, if those sentiments were made on the floor, if you go to Nyamira and you tell the people of Nyamira that they should be governed from Kisi, they will lynch you. If you try and convince the people of Omabe that probably if you are together with the Migori and Kisumu and Siaya, you can be able to do better and bigger, Madam Speaker, you would be lynched. Because there was a misconception at the beginning of devolution that counties belong to certain people, certain tribes. I, I, I will not uh, shy away from saying certain tribes. Madam Speaker, it is so bad that if you come from Bungoma, it is impossible for you to be employed in Kakamega. And we're all lawyers. They say, wewe ukona kwenu. That's a quotation. Don't say that I've offended the standing orders by going into another language. 
Madam Speaker, they will tell you from Bungoma, you also have a county. Why don't you go and apply there? So it has gotten so bad that, in fact, the discussion within some counties is for a even greater disintegration. Senator Halwale would be aware of the agitation by the people from Sabaot in Mount Elgon in Bungoma for them to have their own county. Or for the Tesos in Busia, or indeed uh, in Migori, uh, where the, what are they called, the Kuria, the Kuria, yes, are also agitating that they need their own county. For as long as that county exists to pay salaries to their children, many people are very content. And I've challenged senators, I've asked them, if you sat your county people down and told them, we have two billion shillings here, should we do a road or everybody lines up and gets something to eat today? What do you think the people will say? Correct. Because the appreciation of devolution was misconceived at some point to mean this is ours. For as long as we are eating it, it is Bukusu's eating Bungoma, it is the people of Kakamega eating Kakamega, then there is no problem. Madam Speaker, so that when these disputes arise, all these disputes you see, they are not because of uh, anything else, but because people have sentimental value uh, for these counties. And proposing anything else is going to be very unpopular. And therefore, Madam Speaker, when you see the threshold that has been set in this bill by Senator, uh, Senator for Homer Bay, Kajuan, two-thirds of the National Assembly, two-thirds of the Senate, and I believe there is also a provision that the county assembly of the, of, uh, of the uh, concerned counties must also do what? Must also uh, participate in that decision-making. Madam Speaker, when you go to